Hi guys, this is question four from AS level unit two, a variety of living organisms for AQA. This is a fish question, an exchange in fish question, question four. Um, so you should start off by watching my video about gas exchange in fish. That would come in really helpful. And then we're going to dive into describe and explain how the counter current system leads to efficient gas exchange across the gills of a fish. So it's only asking about countercurrents. The first thing we should be saying is that blood and water are travelling in opposite directions across the gills. And the great thing about this, I'm not going to re-explain the whole thing because you should watch my video, um, is that the most oxygen-rich water um, is coming into contact with the most oxygen-rich blood, and the most oxygen-poor water is coming into contact with the most oxygen-poor blood. Um, and the basically, this maintains a favourable concentration gradient, which is an examiner's favourite phrase, uh, maintains a favourable concentration gradient, favourable... I'll start doing shorthand, concentration gradient, and it's got to be across the entire gill. So across the whole exchange surface. Nice and easy, three marks there. If you need to refresh yourself, check out my video. Uh, what else have we got here? Amiobic gill disease, or AGD, for you uh, fish disease enthusiasts, is caused by a parasite that lives on the gills of some species of fish. Um, and this causes the gill lamellae to become thicker and fused together. This reduces the efficiency of gas exchange. Give two reasons why. Okay, so it's thicker. So we should be thinking longer diffusion pathway. So the uh, diffusion distance is going to be longer. Longer diffusion distance. That's the thickness accounted for. And if they're all fused together, we don't have all those wonderful lamellae and filaments wafting around the place. Um, so they're going to have a lower surface area. Nice and straightforward. All the clues are in the question. What else have we got? Uh, this table shows some features of gas exchange of a fish at rest. We've got some information and we're going to have to do... Uh, some maths. Let's have a look. So we've got information about the volume of oxygen absorbed by the gills from each decimeter cubed of water. Uh, we've got the mass of a fish that we're looking at. Uh, we've got oxygen required by the fish per centimeter cubed per kilogram cube uh, per, for every centimeter cubed um, kilogram per hour centimeter cubed per kilogram per hour right okay so I think the first thing that we should do um, is say work out how much oxygen is required per hour um, by the fish so for that we need to do the mass of the fish which is 0 0.4 kilos uh, times by um, the oxygen requirement so 0 0.4 times by 90. Now, you have to bear with me because I haven't got a calculator to hand. So let me grab that. Uh, 0 0.4 times 90 equals 36. So that is how much oxygen that particular fish will require. And now we need to essentially divide that by 7, which is how much oxygen... Um, the gills can get. So 36 divided by 7 should give us our answer. 36 divided by 7 equals 5.14. And that is our answer, 5.14 decimeter cubed. Uh, it's a bit awkward, this question, because they give you the numbers in not in the right order that you need to use them in. So work out how much... Um, how much oxygen that fish will require per hour for its size, and then take it from that. And 4C part 2, uh, so the volume passing over the gills increases if the water temperature increases. Suggest why. Um, I would be going for 
temperature increases enzyme activity and increases respiration rate. Temp increase equals more resp. So basically, due to increased enzyme activity, uh, we get a faster metabolism, which means our respiration rate is going quicker. And that's it for question 4C. Uh, question four in general, in fact. So let's give ourselves eight out of eight. Thanks very much for, wa for watching. Please check out my gas exchange and fish video and stay tuned for question five. Thank you very much.